Klipsch Cornwall speakers have been around since 1959, and today we're going to check out the fourth iteration of these colossal speakers right after the jump. And I'm back. First things first, I want to thank Corey for sending these in for me to review. Thank you so much. And if you were looking to pick up anything from Klipsch, contact Corey. His link is down in the description. Getting the Cornwalls out of the box is pretty easy. Open up the top and you'll find the bottom of the speaker. Lay the box down and put it so the opening is on the floor. Next, just lift up the box and we are good to go. The Cornwall 4s are a three-way speaker design. For mids and highs, we have horn-loaded compression drivers, one inch for the tweeter, and 1.7 inch for the mid-range. The all-new mid-range driver is made of a polyamide diaphragm mated to a modified Tractrix horn. Below that, we have a 15 inch fiber composite cone woofer. And at the bottom, we have three ports with a new custom design to allow better airflow, which reduces port noise for cleaner, more powerful bass. On the back, we have dual binding posts for those that like to buy amp or buy wire. I will go the normal route and plug them in to get going. The Cornwall 4 have a frequency response of 34 hertz to 20,000 hertz with a crossover at 700 hertz between the woofer and mid-range and 5,000 hertz between the mid-range and tweeter. Power handling is rated at a 100 watts continuous and 400 watts peak. Speaker sensitivity is a whopping 102 dB and nominal impedance is 8 ohms. These speakers are not cheap, coming in at $3,000 each, so $6,000 for the pair. Definitely for those with money to spend. So before I got into actually evaluating the speakers, I let them run for a couple of weeks just as our TV and movie speakers. And I did some fiddling around with them. And in the last week, I did most of my critical listening. Just wanted to let them, you know, warm up a little bit or as some people say, break in. Uh, I don't really know if speakers need to break in, but I let that time pass just because. First thing I noticed was dialogue, crystal clear. These TV shows, the vocals were front and center, and it was great. Didn't really have to turn it up because of the heightened sensitivity of these speakers, and that was also very noticeable. I started out at normal listening volumes at 72 on my you know, regular scale, which is about 75% volume, and that was just way too loud. Way too loud for this space. I definitely think that these speakers are way too big for my living room. As I said, normal listening volume, I'm having the volume around 75%, but with these Cornwalls, average like listening volume is about 57-ish percent. That relates to 55 on the standard scale on the Denon X3600H. Now the speakers are very sensitive and I am powering them with a Parasound A51 and it's just two channels, so it's just stereo. So I'm pushing about 300 watts continuous into each speaker. And since they have like 102 dB sensitivity, I'm probably using like eight to 10 watts, maybe. If that, if that, which is great on the Parasound because I think that's where it still stays in class A. So that's kind of cool. And these speakers are definitely taking advantage of that. Don't need to turn it up loud at all. In fact, I think I could easily go deaf if I'm not careful with the volume, just the way that the system is set up. A lot of power, super efficiency, and wow, man, it's just kind of like blowing. Yeah, I feel like that Maxell ad where the dude's sitting in the chair and they're like, shh, you know, it's happening. That's kind of, that's what it felt like to me. We sit 14 feet away from the front stage and the speakers are about five feet and four inches apart. The instructions do recommend six feet to 14 feet apart and 14 feet apart, man, that's that's a big space, you know, and I wish I had a space like that, but unfortunately my living room is kind of small in that aspect on like where to put these things. And of course these things are over two feet in width. They're not that tall, but they are kind of wide. So it does take up a lot of that space. And my wife really isn't too happy about that. Now, as far as Odyssey or room correction is concerned, I did go ahead and run it as my standard 5.1.4 center channel and surrounds our Martin Logan subwoofers are dual rel 15 inch subwoofers and the high channels are for prime elevation speakers by SVS. I did that because if I wanted to just turn off some speakers, 
than I could, as opposed to adding speakers, then I'd have to run Odyssey again, and that was just kind of a pain in the butt, and I didn't want to waste the time, so I ran in 5.1.4, but I did remove certain things, especially during movie watching. I removed the subwoofers, I removed the center channel, so it's a 4.0.4. Right, I kept the surrounds on, turned off the center, turned off the subwoofer, and that's how I evaluated movies to see how well the Klipsch Cornwalls would handle all the bass and all the vocals and all of that. So that's kind of how I set things up. As far as TV and music, obviously I'm just running those in stereo, full range on the Cornwalls, nothing else. As far as TV watching is concerned, I thought that the Cornwalls did a good job. Now, a lot of these TV shows, uh, Homeland, Westworld, Ozark, even like The Witcher, which I I really wanted to like that, but it was just... But anyway, the, the audio tracks are pretty awesome in some of these shows. They have a lot of bass, they got a lot of stuff going on, along with the dialogue, of course, and sound effects. I thought the Cornwalls handled it pretty good. I was not impressed with the bass. I wanted a little bit more, so I went into tone controls and I bumped up the bass to plus three and that's where it happened. That was awesome. I kept it there. It's just, she's even watching TV right now and it's, it's pretty sweet at that plus three on the bass for TV watching. All these shows, it's, it's kind of just came to life and that was, that was the bass that I needed to feel right. Like it felt like I had my dual 15 inch rail subwoofers on when I bumped up the bass to that level. So I wasn't really missing any low end information. I thought that was pretty cool. With music, I did feel the same with its performance in the bass category. I mean, mids and highs were crystal clear, no fatiguing. And normally I would bump the treble down a notch, you know, after like the second or third hour, but I didn't really have to with these. And with the low volume play, like these sounded really great. You know, just putting 50% volume on these guys was more than enough. You know, even like 40%, it was actually great listening volume. And I could hear a lot of clarity, like hear a lot of detail. Bass to me was still a little lacking. So I put it to plus two on the bass for music and I was having a great time. I put in the Dave Matthews and Tim Reynolds Blu-ray over at the Radio City. It's just the dual acoustics. That was nice. Crowd noise was great. Uh, we have this one recording of a 2018 show by The Cure. It's like a two and a half hour concert. And I gotta tell you, man, it really felt like I was at the show. And there's one thing I did notice very, yeah, they did this really well. And I think that's just part of like The Cure's um, sound guys because the reverb and uh, delay tail on Rob Smith's voice, perfect, perfect. And me being a music producer, I kind of like noticed those things and I haven't heard a spot on vocal reverb in a long time until I saw that. And I think we recorded that a couple of months ago on our DVR. So I still had my music settings, just, so just bass plus two, uh, trebles at zero and running the Cornwall's full range. That was, that was a great show, really took me back and it sounded fantastic on the Cornwalls. Let's quickly talk about center image. It was so easy to achieve with these speakers. Again, I'm coming from Martin Logan Electrostats and that took quite a bit of fiddling around with angles and toe in and toe out and whatever. But with these Cornwalls, man, it was like butter. Like I was, it was easy. I think they got a really, really great sweet spot and it might even cover like two or three seats even depending on how you uh, mess with the toe-in. But man, they were great. It was easy to get that center image and I was pretty stoked about that because it didn't take any time at all. So I went through my demo tracks a few times this week and I'll put a link down in the description for you guys. Uh, the playlist is in both Tidal and Spotify for whichever service you have. And it's basically a three and a half hour playlist and I use a lot of these tracks to test different aspects of the sound. And the first things I usually do is I toss in the Crystal Method, I toss in um, the Eagles, Hotel California, the live version from the MTV show, um, Florence and the Machine, I, anything from the Lungs album, Drumming Song or Cosmic Love or anything like that. And of course, uh, Use Somebody by Kings of Leon. I use these tracks all the time. The Chemical Brothers is a great all-arounder. 
of course, Hotel California classic audiophile recording on a live show. You know, it's got that uh, mic underneath of the conga drum. So in that first intro solo, boom. When they hit that conga, boom. You gotta hear that, feel that in the bass. You know what I'm like right in your chest. Like it's just right there. If you don't, you gotta pass. These speakers definitely did. So that was good there. And of course there's that imaging because if you close your eyes, you should see all the people on the stage or hear them exactly where they should be on the stage. If you've actually seen the video of it, you'll get what I'm saying. And of course uh, the Florence and the Machine and the Kings of Leon are all about hearing how bright the speakers are. Now, usually it's in that 2000, I usually say 2000 to 6000 range, but you know, I've seen some articles where like that 2000 to 4000 is kind of like where that real crazy piercing situation is from. And I know for a fact that the Kings of Leon and the Florence and the Machine album were mixed very brightly. So whenever I have to turn down the treble or turn down the volume listening to those tracks or those albums, that's when I know the speaker is overly bright because the recording's already bright. And so if you can't handle like, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes of that album, then you know that like, oh, I got to turn this treble down. And that's how I can gauge if the speaker is overly bright. The Cornwalls are not. And that is definitely one of the biggest complaints about Cliff speakers is that the horns are giving a lot of harshness, but I didn't notice that at all. For movies, like I said earlier, I was rocking a 4.0.4 setup. So the Cornwalls full range, and the Martin Logan surrounds were crossed over at 80 and the SVS prime elevation speakers were crossed over at hundred, no subwoofers, no center channel. So running the phantom center through the corn walls just to see how they would handle bass duties, uh, foreground music and the dialogue in the films. I popped in the IMAX enhanced copy of Jumanji, the next level and everything from punches to kicks to when they fall down from the sky and land like that big rumble really did shake the floor and the ground and some sometimes some windows there's that scene with the ostriches all rolling around like it, it was pretty intense it was really cool i was not missing the subwoofers at all in that at all and we get into the other scenes with the monkeys and the ladders and the other scene with the breakdance fighting the big fight final fight at the end that was also very cool. Again, I didn't miss the fact that I did not have the subwoofers connected and I was listening at about 60% volume, which is about 10% lower than what I'm normally listening to. And it was loud. Like my wife really couldn't handle it. Like she went to the bedroom. She was like, I'm done with this. this. Even she was trying to like cook while I was watching um, the X-Men Apocalypse one and man, she was just like, this is too much for me. So she had to leave the room and we'll get to that one in a minute. So I popped in a quiet place and there's that first scene with the bridge and the space shuttle making all that noise and the little creatures like running through the woods. It snatches up the kid and just sh shakes everything. That's, it was, it was pretty awesome, pretty intense scene. And the Cornwalls did a great job running these things. Bass was plus three, treble was at zero. Then I moved over to Bumblebee and there's that first fight in the movie where the tower's coming down, a lot of LFE there. The Cornwalls handle that scene without issue or without breaking a sweat. Moving on to John Wick, there's that scene where he was getting ready in his house and getting attacked and there's a lot of gunshots and glass breaking. Really sounded crystal clear and I loved it. All the like grunts and punches and stuff had weight to them. And then of course, when we moved to the bathhouse slash nightclub scene, that was epic. Oh my goodness, sounded so good and super loud. And I'm not even running it at the normal loudness I would with other speakers just because these are so sensitive. Next, I went over to Ready Player One. Of course, the car chase scene has got a ton of stuff going on. And every time the T-Rex or King Kong were to just, you know, land with their foot down or something like that, it would just shake the room. And I was pretty surprised about the performance on these corn walls. Now, one of the demos I usually use and don't really talk about too much, not many people do, I'm not sure why, and that is in X-Men Apocalypse. And there's that scene where they take down the pyramid. They like knock those pegs and these big rectangular, you know, just giant bricks, really, just kind of rolling on through. Ooh, tons of LFE 
in that scene. If you guys haven't checked it out, check it out, turn it up. You're going to love it. And uh, again, the Cornwalls did an awesome job. And I feel like these are really, really good for movies and TV and music. So, hey, triple threat. Love it. Okay, so big question. Who is this for? Well, of course, you got to have deep pockets. That's the first thing. And secondly, if you have a big space, like 12 to 20 feet wide, something like that, I think that would be better than my, like, you know, I only got five feet apart. That's not, that's not good. But if you were able to get them like six, eight, 10, 12 feet apart, I think they would really perform a lot better in that kind of a situation. And you would be able to use this without a center channel and without a subwoofer. So if you're just looking for some big speakers to handle all those duties, I think this is for you. Another application could be if you have a 100 inch, 120, 150 inch screen, like an ultra short throw projector, and it's a big wall, and you can't use a center because you got the ultra short throw projector and you don't have space for subwoofers, that would also be a good option. You can play music through that, watch your daily TV, and then get into movie mode, running those bad boys full range with the bass ticked up just a little bit. And of course, let's not forget you Klipsch lovers out there, if you already like that sound, you got the deep pockets in the space and love that heritage look, definitely check them out. Hit up my man Corey for the best pricing. Now, if I was tasked into describing these speakers in three words, I would say big, bold, and beautiful. They definitely take up some space and they look great in most room environments. They have a clarity and definition that is easy to hear. Now, at first I wasn't impressed with the bass, but after turning it up a couple of notches, everything was right as rain. So if you're looking for a pair of speakers and that's it, like you don't want an AVR, you don't want center channels, you don't want Atmos, you don't want subwoofers. If you just want a pair of speakers, you got a big space and something that can tackle movies, TV, music with like an integrated amp, definitely check out the Cornwall 4s. These things are gonna last like 20 plus years. So there's probably gonna be like the last speaker you buy. Fingers crossed. So you should definitely check these out. And again, big shout out to Corey for sending these in for me to review. Thanks buddy. And if you guys at home have any questions for me, leave them down in the comments below or hit me up on social or email, whichever you like to use. And don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel using the button in the middle of your screen. Once again, my name is Chana D. I'm your Techno Dan. I'll see you next time.